Hello everyone, Pally Tub here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Hope you guys are having a great day today. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Taronda on the live servers as she is right now. She does have a pretty expansive rework coming in on the PTR. I have not had a chance to check it out yet, but it's been a while since we've done a Taronda video, so I just wanted to have a fresh comparison in everyone's mind so we can kind of appreciate the changes that are going to go through on the PTR or that are on the PTR now that are going to be in the game probably next week. I wanted to be able to appreciate those changes more and have a much more recent memory of Taronda in my head. Uh, as of right now, her dominant build is the Owl build, which leads you to uh, get tons and tons and tons of cooldown reduction, which allows you to heal more. And you're kind of relying on that cooldown reduction to enable your healing, but you're also using Owls to great effect of dealing lots of damage across the map, where potentially you could be. Uh, we're going to play her today. It's been a long time since I played her, so I'm probably going to be rusty, and she's extremely difficult. Probably the most difficult sport in the game to play. What the fuck is our team? Ugh. Hello, everyone. Pally Tub here. I uh, already did that. Sorry. I was thrown off by the fact that we have three supports on our team. What? Well, you find yourselves in the Cursed Hollow. Friendly team, Gul'dan, Uther, Trondruth, Burundruth, Samuro, and Rhaegar. The enemy team, Lili, Chromi, Valera, Malfurion, <laughs> Gul'dan. Ten seconds. Oh, man. Well, uh, we are going to go for Empower at level 1. When a Sentinel impacts a target, Toronto's cooldowns are instantly reduced by two seconds sometimes. So, I mean... That's all. I mean, I'm on a giant golden cock. What do you, who do you think? Who do you think I am? <laughs> That's rude. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm just so flabbergasted by this. Oh, good. My, um... My ability wasn't going off. I tried to cast Owl like six times there. What do I go to? Options? No. It's hotkeys. Quick cast settings. Use global settings. Uh, I mean, it's on release. Let's just make sure. We can put that on. Put Hunter's Mark on. Oh my god. Did I not save that? Oh, fuck you! Okay. Anyway. No one's stuck at the bottom lane right now. So, Tyrande's abilities! Her Q ability is the Light of a Loon. This is where Uther got his ideas from. If you heal a friendly target, you heal yourself as well. Which is pretty fantastic. Uh, considering Tyrande's healing is pretty limited, very long cooldown on this. Eight seconds on her only healing ability. Uh, being able to give it to an ally is very, very nice. And uh, being able to heal yourself at the same time is quite nice as well. Her W ability is the Sentinel. It is a straight line skill shot that travels indefinitely until it hits a target. After, <laughs> Dude, I'm reading you like a book, baby girl. I'm sorry. Uh, once it hits a target, they will be revealed for a few seconds. So that Valera should have been hit, I think. that It looked pretty good. And then uh, once they're revealed, you know, you can, do, you can do whatever. Just go damage them, you know, whatever. Oh, I didn't read that. I didn't read that at all. I think I win this trade, though. Maybe not. The owl snipe, though? Oh, we don't even need it. We don't even need the owl snipe. We got this. I'll go back and heal him rather than trying to secure the kill. Because I would feel really bad if he died next to me. Rhaegar is a pretty aggressive early game character, so... I actually like our lane quite a bit. Beautiful. Uh, our E ability is the light, no, that's not light of a loon, it's the Lunar Flare. And the Lunar Flare is a skill shot stun. Pretty difficult to land. You gotta invest some time in Tyrande to get used to it. It's not that it's a weird delay or anything, nothing like that. It's just that it's, you know, you gotta react fast. Once, once you see a person in a position you can stun them in, you have to hit the button immediately. There's really not a lot of wiggle room. We are gonna go for Pierce at level four. The idea is we want to heal, fire off an owl to reduce our cooldowns, and then heal again. <laughs> Whoa, that was scary. Uh, I'm actually pretty vulnerable here if we move forward. So we want it to pierce through as many targets as we can so we can heal as often as possible. Kind of like that. 
Now, unfortunately, I cannot delay this anymore without taking a large amount of damage, but the team is starting to show up. We'll go ahead and heal up our Uther. <laughs> Stun this Valyria once again. Maybe secure a kill with the help of Samuro. Uh, let's see what this Al does. I thought I killed her. She just vanished again. That's all. So the Al, you may notice, doesn't do a lot of damage right now. If we do go for the snipe build, which I probably will on this map, it's pretty fun. If we do go for the snipe build, it does ramp up quite a bit. Look at that stun. That was gorgeous. Unfortunately, the wind will interrupt the objective. And we could just chase after this Chromie. Potentially chase after that Li Ming as well. Good job, team. Uh, we have a ton of sustain. Like a fucked up amount of sustain. So... I would imagine that we can outlive most of the Chromie poke. I would assume. I think it's I think it's a pretty safe bet. But yeah, um, let's try it in a nutshell. Her trait gives vulnerability, which is pretty important. You need to remember to uh, use that on targets that you're trying to take down. Usually, targets that you stun, you also want to put the hunter's mark on. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It does have kind of a weird range, though. Do I not have cleanse? Huh. Huh. But I had cleanse. Woo, it was close. I guess we'll go for lunar momentum, then. Uh, reduce our cooldowns even more just by auto-attacking things. I believe this only works on our basic abilities. Yeah, just basic abilities. Half a second off of our cooldowns every time we auto attack. And considering we have a 1.25 per second auto attack, it goes by pretty quick. Uh, we are caught in the time trap, but the owl will interrupt Chromie or at least force her back momentarily. We do see Malfurion rotating down here. Fuck. Come on. Come on. That's just too good. I'm good at this game sometimes. You know, I used to, Toronto used to be one of my go-tos as well. There's very few things in this game that are more fun than across map snipes with the owl, especially at level 16 where you can start to take out enemies' faces. Uh, I think that's why I like Chromie. Just those long range skill shops are really, really enjoyable. Because we have so much sustain on our team, I actually don't feel bad at all just using my Lunar Flare to lane clear. I mean, I don't mind one bit. Let's see if we hit that Gul'dan. Read him like a book. <laughs> ah! Ah, it's so good! So good. So good at this game. Fuck. And I thought I was going to be rusty. Basically, if you want to play a good Tyrande in the game right now, maybe not after the changes, but in the game right now, if you want to play a good Tyrande, literally just look at your mini-map all of the time. That's the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth step. Look at your fucking mini map. Uh, we can cut this way and kill her. Or not. Three, two, good job. Uh, we do curse the enemy team. We grabbed the first three objectives. That seems generous. Dude, I think we're okay. Guess I'll heal myself. So how the how the lunar flare officially works, right? Toronto heals herself for 237. If it's cast on an ally, you heal for 400, whatever the fuck. So it's always better to cast on an ally, even if you're at full health, or even if you're like, you're never gonna get the full effect of the heal, is what I'm trying to say. You're never gonna get that 400. So even if your ally is only missing a few hit points, it's better to heal them as opposed to you. We do not need more sustain on this team, so we're going to go for Starfall and just try to deal more damage, I think. Uh, we can throw an owl over here. I mean, it's not going to do much, but we'll poke them. They dodged it, though. Uh, bottom lane's getting pushed in really far, and the enemy team is rotating in on that right now. They do need to be aware of that. They are taking the vision right now. They just got their heroic abilities as well. Uh, I'm actually really glad Chromie got the Slowing Sands, because I don't think we picked up a cleanse. We sure did not. Um, so I'm just gonna move in here and try to help out our Uther. Stun on Chromie, Starfall right here. Uh, we can heal up our Samuro a little bit as well. Uh, time to leave though. Time to leave for sure. Uh, we might be able to kill him, hold up. No, I forgot he could trade health. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm bad at this game. <laughs> Uh, let's just attack this wall on the way out, lower our cooldowns, heal some more. I mean, that's pretty impactful. 
Her cooldown reduction is extremely impactful. And that's kind of the whole basis of the character. Um, you don't do good healing in small little, like your your heal is really limited, but if you continue to get the cooldown reduction every chance you get, all of a sudden, uh, you could start to be pretty impactful. I would argue that my healing is nowhere close to me. <laughs> I would say, I think, I'm, I think I'm keeping pace. I think I'm doing well. I'm keeping pace with Lili, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and fire off an owl here. Not gonna help too much, but um, yeah, it's something. Heal up our Gul'dan as well. We did miss the stun on Malfurion on the way out, but we should have another one coming in soon, or at least I thought we would. Heal for our Rhaegar. Again, we want to heal him over us. We'll just go ahead and stun right here. Get out of dodge. Was that a friendly Reign of Vengeance? It sure was. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's no risk of the enemy team killing him, so might as well, right? That feels bad. Uh, level 14, we are, or 13, excuse me, we are going to go for, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to go for Overflowing Light. Light of Luna's increased healing while at high health. Or maybe we want Shrink Ray. I mean, we have so much sustain already. Do we really need more healing? I don't know. Never really been in this situation before. Uh, the enemy team is putting up a pretty good defense here. We're all hanging back like we're vulnerable and shit. Ouch. It's probably because we're vulnerable and shit. Even though we have three healers, they have a lot of burst with Valera, Twilight Dream, uh, Water Dragon, Cro um, Water Dragon Lily, Chromie hitting you from the back line. They have, they actually have a ton of burst. So if we don't react immediately, it can kind of spiral out of control like that. Samro did grab the tribute before they even noticed. It's kind of embarrassing. Looks like he's gonna get away just fine as well. I really should work on my Illusion Master Samro. I am uh, pretty lacking in that category. Does it connect? Nope. Nope. Thank you for the ancestral. Cheating with those big heels? What the fuck? The fu I think it's so funny that Uther went for divine shield as well. Man, I really should have gone for a light of a loon. That's not. That's the heal. That's not that. What is it called? Shadowstock. Oh shit. Oh no. That positioning was bad. Oh. That was almost catafucking-strophic. Oh my god. <laughs> that hunter's mark on fucking... On Ghoul Dan just dominated him. He didn't know what hit him. Wow. All right, so we're moving in. This is good. I like it. I like it. Uh, we'll just... Well, that's unfortunate. I was going to try to stun the uh, interrupt out, but I was a little too far away. We'll heal Rhaegar to heal ourselves. Again, that's important. And Chromie is taken down. We're not channeling on the objective right now, but that is actually completely okay, because we might get a couple kills in here. Valera out of position trying to open up on me. That stun should land. Unfortunately, I mean, I don't have any other abilities to throw at her, but hey, the stun landed. That's all I got, okay? Expertly dumb uh, we could turn on that pretty easily if we wanted to. Uh, team, 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 team. Where do we go, team? Oh, this is scary. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. We can't go that way. Uh, again, we have to heal other people, not ourselves. I'm totally out of mana, though. <laughs> we do have auto attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get out. Let's get out. I require additional mana. Stop it, ghoulish Daniel. Thank you, Cut it out! Ugh. Oh, that was, that was getting a little sketchy. It's getting a little sketchy, team. No reason to fight that either. Oh, that horrified going out, I think, put someone into a wall, but it looks like they're okay. Another tribute spawning right now. Uh, if we get 16 here, that'd be fantastic. A stun did go off, I believe, on Valera, but she went for Cloak of Shadows, so she's able to get out a lot of stuff. They also have a cleanse on their team as well. Yeah, they were prepared. They were prepared for all this CC. Ooh, I'm on the wrong side of this. Let's just try to channel and see how it goes. Gotta dodge that. And gotta dodge that. And gotta dodge that. <laughs> oh, man. 
All right, Ranger coming out at level 16. This is when your owl gets a lot of damage. 500 damage from that range. The longer it travels, the more damage it does. This allows you to essentially snipe people from across the map if with Tyrande if you play it properly, which is so satisfying. Remember, every time you hit someone with the owl as well, you get cooldown reduction. So I just fired it off right there and immediately got four seconds off that cooldown to fire it off again. Fantastic. I just realized he got Reign of Vengeance versus a Chromie and a Valera. That just sunk in. So you're gonna stand still versus two massively high damage dealing targets. It's a little scary, team. It's a little scary. Uh, stun over here. Heal our Uther. Nice pickup. Some cooldown reduction with that owl so I can heal again. Uh, stun right here. Lock that Valera down. We overlapped a little bit, but I think it should be okay. Owl out so we can heal again. Uh, let's give it to Rhaegar. Because Rhaegar cannot ancestral himself. And it looks like we won the video game! It was a bit of a weird one, but now you understand the basics of how Toronto works in the current game. Weird, weird game, team. Very uh, awkward match. <laughs> Extremely. Uh, so, you don't heal for a ton, but you can lower your cooldowns a, in a variety of ways. You can also get rewind to level 20 if you wanted to. To spam heals probably more than any other healer in the game. Lily, I guess, spams a little bit more. Uh, but if you play it properly, it's a ton of cooldown reduction, it's a ton of healing output, and you can also be extremely offensive at the same time, enabling your, your team to get kills with the Hunter's Mark, enabling your team to get kills with the stun. She combos incredibly well with Stitches right now. Great job, you dealt 8,637 siege damage during a curse. 230% more <laughs> than similar players. What do Toronto players do during curses? The world may never know. Talents I went for in today's video, if you want to try it out, I mean, there's probably not a lot of time left, but Empower, Pierce, Lunar, Momentum, Starfall, Overwhelming, Light, Ranger, and I probably would have gone for Rewind at level 20. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.